Hey, what's going on guys? Quinn Black. In this video, I'm going to be talking about my entire entrepreneurship journey as far as the start from when everything started to where I am now. As far as my mindset throughout the, the entire journey, things that I did, um, certain people that I actually met that benefited me over time also. And people that are on the same path, I feel like this video can definitely help you out because I'm, I feel like I'm nothing special. <laughs> you know, like I'm a regular dude. I went to the the local high school, everything. So nothing really was out of the ordinary, I feel like, but it's just, it's just me just having a strong work ethic and me me putting all, all the time into my, my craft to get better at it. That's the big thing, all right? So overall, I feel like it started from high school. From, from high school, I used to actually unlock iPhones and um, jailbreak iPhones and jailbreak PSPs. And you know, I used to just make money off of that. Like I was like that guy in high school that, okay, it's, go to him if you want this or that or that or that because I used to actually get like almost any product that anybody needed at, at a time period when it came to iPhones or like gaming devices or whatnot so like it was pretty cool just 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 having you know that kind of title and just and then benefiting from that over time all right so after high school actually um, I, I wasn't working for a good amount of time because I never had a green card because um, I'm born in, in Jamaica, so I never had a green card, nothing like that. So I had no choice but to, you know, make money other ways. And I was never into, in, into selling drugs or never did anything illegal to make any kind of money. So like things that I do what was always legal um, in, in every kind of way, because I, I, I've never been a person to steal from other people or nothing like that. Things were just um, always just trying to take advantage of certain opportunities if I figure out what they can actually do or, or, or the potential of a certain thing. So with the iPhone thing, it actually got a little pushed beyond high school also because I met certain people that um, showed me um, certain offices with like lowers and everything. Like I used to always go go to the office and hang out and that kind of thing and, and make friends with, with, with all the lawyers and they all had iPhones. So my friend telling them like, hey, like this guy, jailbreak iPhones and everything then then they could have like a, a cool screensaver or, or whatnot you know that's what they wanted so they just wanted like that, that full potential of the iPhone and that's where I, I came about because I had a knowledge to pretty much you know you know give to them you know when I was getting paid for it so it was, it was kind of cool that I could do that and seeing that every single person in that office had iPhone you know I made a, a good amount of money a good amount of money off of that. It was like around five hundred dollars at the time, which was which was a lot of money from where I was coming from, honestly, because I never really had uh, any any major opportunities to make money besides that at that time. So after that, um, after that, like I saved up enough money to to buy my my first vehicle. My first vehicle actually was a motorcycle because I I wanted a bike so bad. So I, I bought a bike when I was around twenty years old. And around that, that same time period also, I was lucky enough to um, you know, get through with my, my green card and everything. So that, that made me able to actually get a job because once I actually got my, my, my green card, um, I, I went to apply for jobs immediately. Jobs, jobs, jobs. Like that, like that next day after all that happened, I went, to, I went to Publix, I went to Walmart, I went to Walgreens. I literally wanted to, to work anywhere because all I wanted was a fucking paycheck. Like, that's it because I was not going to waste the opportunity that I had when I came in, into this country. Um, like some people, like some people, you know, they're, they're, they're obviously born here, but at the same time, they let certain things like that just slip out of their hands because, you know, they don't see the opportunity that this country actually offers them. And I was not going to let that slip out of my hands for nothing. All right. So I had my my motorcycle, and I had I had my application that I turned in. So from there, I had um, I linked up with certain friends from high school, and um, one of them got me inter an interview at, at this one job, a warehouse job. So from there, I was um, I got the job. I went to the interview. I, I put up on the motorcycle, and um, I got the job. And my first paycheck from that job was three hundred dollars three hundred dollars and i was blown away why because i'm like i have to come to, to to this place for so and so and i make this much that's crazy because that's not what i was making when i was unlocking phones and and um and 
jailbreaking PSPs because it eventually w was going to run out when people caught on to how to actually jailbreak these certain things. So I was just so blown away by how much money I actually developed just from doing that alone. And it was my first check. So I opened up my, my bank account and, uh, and from there, like it turned into, um, me just really, really trying to get to a higher position at a job. Like I was really fascinated because at that time it was, it was about three or three or four or four people working at that job. So it wasn't much and all the work was on us at the end of the day. So I understood that. And I, I just felt like I was important. So like that was the, the, the main thing I felt I was important and I was recognized and I was good. I was chilling. All right. So from there, um, I, I got used to the paycheck, but also I got annoyed of how much time I was actually putting there and seeing how much money was going out the window. Because remember before I never had bills or I never had a car or a bike. So when all these things started to come in, I had to, to buy like bike insurance, a motorcycle insurance, I had to buy gas, I had to pay for tickets, I had to do all kinds of things. So that $300 every two weeks was going down the drain. So from there, I, I used to go online and um, I used to just look up how can I make money online and that kind of stuff. Just really try, try to figure out how can I make money other ways than a job because I used to see people all the time online just, you know, they're super young and, they, and they're making a shit, shit ton of money. And I always believe that there's some sort of truth behind something, always. Like me seeing that, I, I was never skeptical, but I knew that there was some sort of truth behind them having this or them having that and and those people be, being able to travel where, whenever or wherever they wanted to at that kind of age. So, you know, I just did a lot of digging, <laughs> a lot of digging and really try, try to figure out what they actually did. So around that time period, even when I was working at that job, um, I started to get into network marketing. So I was doing network marketing. I was, I had a job and I was still in school. So, cause when I started the job, um, once again, I took advantage of my, my green card and, and, and everything else. I started the job and I signed up, I signed up for school and everything. Um, I started going, going to school for nursing at that time period because I was so fascinated by how the body works and everything. So like, I was like, let me become a nurse because I seen the income, the starting income was probably like around 70,000 or something. So I was like, yo, like I'm, I'm all for it whatever because I was already cool with you know a lot of people that um I was going to, sc to school with so it just made me want to go to school more because I, I was seeing old friends and everything so around that, that time period also um I got started into network marketing and started to figure out how all that that works but um I was kind of turned off by me actually having to you know recruit people and that kind of stuff and I, I lost a lot of friends when I used to do network marketing because a lot of friends were turned off by, by me trying to actually convince them to do something that they probably didn't even want to do. All right. And back then it had like a bad name anyways, um, a pyramid scheme, like everybody knew it as a pyramid scheme, but I was just learning about all this stuff. So I don't know what was going on. All right. So I kept on digging some more and I found out about stocks, um, like the, the stock market, obviously. And you know, I started to do stock options. Um, Trading options with Trade King is a, a broker. I think they actually changed the unbroken name also now, but back then it was it was Trade King, and I started doing stock options, like learning about it, like learning how the money's made. I, and I used to watch videos every single day, every single day, on how can I get get better at this kind of industry. So I did stock options for a couple of years. Like the most money that I made inside of it, like in a week, was like 800. So it wasn't I wasn't too good, but at the same time. All I really cared about was understanding the concept and me knowing that you know I, I could get I could get better over time and eventually I'll quit my my job. So because I was watching other people videos and they're they're always saying like yeah like you you probably get get good around um, ten years or twenty years. So I was open to you know experiencing those ten or twenty years. So I wasn't rushing it. So so me making the most in one week eight hundred dollars. I was like okay cool like I have you know ten. 10 more 10 more years plus so I'm not in a rush for it because you know I'm still in that good time span of getting to where I want to be in 10 years so <laughs> that was kind of annoying honestly 
Um, so I, I worked that job for about four years. Um, back then also, I, I stopped doing the stock options for a little bit because things got like real slow and you know, I wasn't really like, like making the kind of money that I wanted to actually make in stock options. So um, I just got like, like, like really um, discouraged by how slow the money was and, and how slow the process was also. So I got fired from, from that last job, the warehouse job, e even after working there for four years, um, you know, being one of the first, the first five people to, to even be in that business into where it is now you, and you still get fired after being there for so long, which is ridiculous. Like it kind of shows you that like, you know, you could be replaced like this at a job. All right, it sucks. So after that, um, I got fired and I just started to like really focus back on like on network marketing. Um, I joined a couple affiliate companies to actually you know sell a product and make some kind of money off of it. So I'll, I'll, I was doing that like right after I got fired because that was the only way on how, how I actually knew how to actually get some sort of money. So back then, um, I got pretty good at that um, that company, that affiliate company. I was making about probably like seven hundred dollars every week, which was pretty decent because that that was more than what I was, I was getting paid when I was at the warehouse job. Because um, eventually at the warehouse job, I was getting paid six eighty six hundred eighty five dollars every two weeks on salary. Six hundred eighty five dollars every two weeks on salary, and me making seven hundred dollars every week now you know not being at a job and just doing it on my own time and just really putting my own effort to get where I want to be with my income it kind of showed me a lot it showed me that there was no kind of cap and as me just like watching everyone else at that time also I had um some friends that were making a thousand dollars a week two thousand dollars a week and I was like yo mp4 wait for it all right good all right so yeah, so like at that time period, like I had friends that were making like a thousand dollars a week, two thousand dollars a week. So I was just like blown away by it because I was like, yo, I want to be there. So I just kept on fucking grinding. I just kept on grinding because I knew the potential of it. And some of these people that were making the thousand or two thousand dollars a week were younger than me. So I was definitely on my grind then, right? So um, I started to like really put a lot of time into like social media, uh, Facebook and Instagram. Actually, not really too much Instagram at that time, but probably just Facebook. Like really trying to build up my following, my friends, my connections, um, and really see like what I actually do with that. So um, eventually, I, I, I got really big in those affiliate companies. Um, not big t to the point that I was making two two thousand dollars a week, but like big as in I was known because I was. There we go. All right. Um, big in the fact that I was known. God damn! Really. Yeah, big in the fact that I was known for because I used to take a lot of photos. I used to take a lot of photos and I used to just like really try to get my my face out there and just like get exposed to, hey guys, th th this is Q, this is me, blah blah that kind of thing. I'm not making all this, but at the same time, just watch me, all right. And um, after that, I I was just so stuck on trying to get better at that company that. I stayed in the house for like around four or five months just trying to get get better and like really really just always on the computer and that caused me to get really depressed like I went through a stage of, of depression for a few months and that's when um, I had to just get out of the house I, ha I had to get out of the house because things weren't really in my favor at the time period and I wasn't really getting better mentally staying in the house um, I lost a lot of weight and it was bad. It was, it was it was real real bad. So I got out of the house and I started to work at Target. That's where Target comes inside this entire thing, right? And um, I started working at Target and I, I I was loving it because I was always around people. I was always around people because even back in high school I was always social. So me being in the house for four or five months, you know, that is not something that I'm really used to. So when I started to work at Target, um, I I was still doing my network marketing stuff. Um, I kind of put like a put the stocks options on the back burner for a little while because I was making a good amount of money with the affiliate program. So I was like, just like, um, let me just focus on this since this other thing is not making me as much money as I would like. So 
from there, um, at, at Target, I pretty much like met a lot of co cool friends also. And around that time period also, I was still always on Facebook and everything else. And around that time period, I see a lot of friends, um, you know, posting, you know, these screenshots of, of stuff, like of some blue profits. So I, I was just trying to understand like what that was. So they told me that, that it was Forex. And then I had a flashback, of, like, like, yo, like, I remember when I was on my, my stock broker account, you know, they, they, they showed me something about Forex and then I opened up an account with it and demoed it for a little while, paper trade. And I never really understood it because there was so much go going on and the entire platform was just different from what I was used to. So I put it on a back burner and I, I was like, it's too complicated, so let, let me not even bother. So then I had some friends that kind of showed me the, the, the breakdown of of how the profit is made and it was the same concept as stock option the same concept as stocks period and you know they showed me like certain examples of certain things and from there i i went full-fledged in that which came out to be forex foreign exchange market so from there you see you, you see the smile on my face though right because that is like one thing that changed my fucking life all right so from there um i begin dabbling into like technical analysis and whatnot and learn how to pretty much get better at analyzing these charts right here because if i analyze these charts better i can make more profit over time and i got um i got pretty good like i was definitely uh, unrecognized in my group and recognized meaning that hey guys oh that guy is a guy to like watch out for because he's making so and so and so and so and that means that I was really good at analyzing and, and I just understood the um, market. Like I just understood like it seemed like one plus one equals two. Like that's how the market was to me at, at that time. And I just comprehended it like hella good compared to some people because everybody always asks me like what makes me good at trading? I'm like it's just pretty much just comprehension. Like it's just like what makes certain people good at science or, or, or math? You know they're just good, they're just good with numbers or, or good with you know, scientific type stuff. Like that's what they're into. And that's how their their mind actually operates. So like my mind operated because when I actually see the, the charts, like things just were one plus one equals two. It just made sense to me. So me just like being who I am, um, I was on the charts literally every single day, every single day, studying, 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 looking up stuff, baby pips, that kind of thing. Just looking up stuff and just like really trying to be on the charts enough to understand what the hell is going on and what does what happens here to equals this or, or what happens this and this to equal this you know like i was always under like trying to figure out what made the market move like how it did so from there um we were recognized enough because we started um forever and profit in april 2015 and um around that that time period i actually um I, I, I was still on working at Target and people were always like, hey, like if you're making so-and-so, like why are you working here? I'm like, yo, like, you don't understand my, my vision. You know what I'm saying? Like people that say certain things like that, they're, they're looking at the money, but they're not understanding the process of what I'm doing to even get where I want to be. Because I used to always show like my profits to like my coworkers and everything. And I was like, yo, like, yo, like I'm working here, but this is what I do outside of work, you know? And they never believed me. And around that time period also, like I had just bought a, a, a brand new car, a BMW, and I was just driving to work and people were always like, hey, like your your target checks aren't paying for this car. I was like, I know, <laughs> all right? And around that time period, things started kind of take off because I started taking trading a lot more seriously. I started putting a lot of time into trading and you know, the Fair and Profit brand was starting to actually grow. So around that that time, um, like about I think like like nine months or ten months or like nine months into working at Target, um, I put in my two weeks because two two things gave me red flags as to this is not what I'm meant to actually do. For one, it was one time that I actually was on break and I walked outside trying to actually you know make sure a student is actually getting their analysis right on a certain setup and. I had to go in back to work before I could even finish talking to that that um, new member for um, Forever and Profit. And I was like, damn, like, why am I still 
working here when I'm trying to help the person that was on the phone get out of their job while I'm still working at my job. It doesn't make sense. Like it's like me contradicting everything that I'm that, um, that I'm doing. So from there, a couple nights later, we were actually um, we did like a, a late night shift at Target, and pretty much, you know, all the carts were outside. This is where I heard, this scene is also shown on my website as well. Um, the carts were everywhere at Target. Like, the, Target has a huge parking lot, and it was like a holiday season, and there was probably over 150 carts all over the parking lot, and it was raining also. So pretty much students i mean people were with well, the co-workers were walking outside taking off their shirt and everything else and i was like i'm not taking off my, my fucking shirt and getting paid like only eight eight fifty an hour like i'm good and from there i was like yo this is not what i'm i'm meant to do so i put in my my two weeks like about a week later and um from there i i, I left target i focused strictly on forever and profit and now the group uh, Forever Profit now a couple years later has over 3,400 400 members all over the entire world making a great amount of income and I'm not talking about you know a million dollars a week and everything like that but what we actually teach in, in Forever and Profit is pretty much just the ability to take advantage of a certain craft to make some sort of income a day e even if it's like a uh, hundred dollars a day or tw or two hundred dollars a day three hundred dollars a day like that could still change you change what, what you have going on in some sense and that's what I believed and that's what we preached over time because us us making profits over time that made us get get better at our craft and then we got better at teaching our, our craft and we never um intended it to be like as big as it is now but it kind of shows you that like when you actually focus on a certain thing and you actually believe in what you actually are doing you know, it's it's no saying on how big it actually get if you just keep on striving to get better at it. All right, and from there, um, things kind of took off. Like Forever and Profit, thirty four hundred students all over the entire world, and then was well, two thousand three hundred students out of those three thousand four hundred students are on Wall Street Academy, which is my mentorship group, which only focuses on my style compared to Forever and Profit is the main brand which has 2,000 in my style and my um, business partner Ryan's style inside of it. So it's two styles in one group. And you could like pick and choose on how you actually want to trade because we all trade different. So I might see the market different than he does and he might see the market different from what I do. And and yeah, so like from there, um, things kind of just, just took off um, my mentality got so much so much better knowing that things are possible knowing that entrepreneurship is possible if you actually take that right route to get where you want to be like it doesn't have to be trading it could be um you know any kind of, of marketing or anything you know what i'm saying but at the same time trading is what actually exposed me to that lifestyle that i actually wanted to actually live like and i, and I don't live like a, a flashy lifestyle honestly like i mean i have a nice car now i i just bought um my porsche gt3 and um, I have also a BMW M3 as well. And those are artist cars that I've always wanted. So pretty much I grinded my ass off just to get where I want to be and my craft and everything helped me actually accomplish th those goals that I couldn't have accomplished if I didn't actually go, go the route that I did, I'm pretty sure of. Um, Cause if I actually didn't get fired from that first job at the warehouse, I'm pretty sure I would have still been there till this day because I'm, I'm, I'm not the kind of person that quits stuff. Um, like just say I quit. No, nah. um, it has to be like a real reason as to why I'm quitting, or um, you know, I just get comfortable enough to just like want to stay. And and me seeing that Forever and Profit had needed my focus at that time period when I actually left Target, you know, it was definitely a good reason because I had life to change. I had people that I could have gave my my value to, and I wasn't gonna make a job paying me eight fifty an hour hold me back from that because I was pretty much already making money trading forex but at the same time it it was still a risk regardless because even when i left target i still had um bills to pay and everything and i only had like six thousand dollars to my name which could have been you know gone in no time within months because i had rent to pay for which was fourteen hundred dollars i had insurance um car payment everything to pay for so that's that six thousand dollars that i saved up was really was really not that much at all 
and and yeah, it just took focus in it, and then like me just knowing that I believe in my work ethic enough to to like not give up. Um, I left that job, you know, chest high and everything, and you know, a couple years later, I'm I'm here now, you know. So it kind of shows you that like you know, don't miss out on any opportunity. That if you are presented with any kind of opportunity, see what's it about, you know, before you actually say. I'm okay. Just you know, do 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 some research, look into it, try it out, and then see if it works for you. And if it doesn't, you know, like I have many opportunities that I still try it out, even when I've been trading for these past couple years. Um, just kind of to see, like, hey, like, can this benefit me or or not? You know, I'm not the kind of person to, to turn out any kind of opportunity. I don't care how bizarre it sounds. I'll look into it, see like what's it about, because I I, I believe once again. There's always some sort of truth behind something, all right, and and yeah, so um, so yeah, that's that's how I got to where I am now, and you know, it's no going back. It's no going back. It's definitely time to actually, you know, it's it's definitely time to just get get better and get get more focused, but also knowing that I'm still very very young in what I'm doing, and knowing that I have a lot more to actually grow. Um, that's the scary part also because you know things did move fast and and yeah I I just never gave up I never lost lost sight of my vision for how I wanted to actually live and um and yeah um, th these are things that I've been talking about like I had a few posts on Instagram also that I was saying that I'm gonna drive this Porsche in in two years I had. Uh, another post about how I'm gonna be I'm living also with like a car outside and a bike outside and a nice house that kind of thing so it's like you know it's all manifestation and these are things that I actually um, you know I wrote about because I used to watch The Secret if, if you guys know what that that, that um documentary is I used to write The Secret and I used to write notes about that um, from that documentary every single day and just start to like really manifest you know how I want to live and things that actually want to gravitate towards me so it comes with, it comes with time but it also comes with just your mindset throughout the entire journey because if your entire journey you're negative then you're not gonna really get anywhere I've always been the kind of person to always try to figure out things and don't turn on any kind of opportunities but always be curious on what's possible all right um and yeah um I mean even now like people see me like um they, they they see like what I'm driving and everything but and always ask like what do I do and I was like yeah like I I trade and I run a business also so you know I have multiple streams of income it's not just trading you know what I'm saying and um, pe um people ha have to un understand that because trading is like is like one source hell yes but at the same time there's so many other sources that I have also as well that I developed over time but also knowing that trading is the main reason that got me there you know, I have to just be blessed just to be in this position to even, you know, give the the, the, the value that I've actually gained over time to other people and just kind of change other people's lives also because I have, there's many students in Wall Street Academy and Forever Profit that's doing great. Um, there are some students that are making, you know, a couple thousand dollars a day, uh, $500 a day, $200 a day, $300 a day, $400 a day. Like, it's really based on them, but at the same time, we just show like what's possible, you know, just from, from just from learning a craft and then really focusing on that craft and then, you know, using that craft to how you want to use it, depending on if you are still working, if you are not working, like it's really all on you. Like there's some students that, that, that still work a job and still trade. There's some students that, that still go to school and still trade. There's, there's some students that are police officers and some students that are pastors and some students that you know, are still doing, you know, their main thing that they want to do and not just focus on trading, but at the same time, they're just using trading as an extra source of income to get where they want to be or, or just to fund their vision, which is cool as hell, you know, so, so yeah, um, hopefully this video helped you guys out a lot when it came down to like knowing who I am and like how I go about things and just like my mindset on when it comes to taking advantage of opportunities, you know, so, so yeah. Um, yeah, so if you guys are interested in, in trading and just like really just like getting better at this craft, like there's a bunch of free material online. 
But when it comes down to like really like learning like me and it's like learning my style of trading and like my mindset on how I actually go about it, you know, you can check out WSA training, WSA training.com. The link's going to be like right down here also. And, um, and also check me out on Instagram at Q banks, C U E B A N K S. And yeah, um, just take advantage of stuff, man, because like there's too many opportunities in this world to not be where you want to be is really just based on you <laughs> no one else is really no one else so no excuses i don't believe in any excuses everything is possible if it wasn't then it would never have been a thought you know so um so yeah so i'm i'm see you guys on when i see you guys i guess all right peace out